Hi everyone, welcome back to Nobody Talks Anymore. This week I'm really excited to have Trusted Fox on um, because he's one of the people who sort of helped me since I started here and I'm a bit of a failed music photographer so I kind of want to learn a bit myself. So do you want to introduce yourself? Hi mate, uh, hello everybody. Um, my name's Nidge, uh, it's really Nigel but I don't really like using that name. Uh, and I take photos um, of gigs and sort of performance and stuff like that. So what sort of got you you into it, like the, the first thing you did? Um, I haven't failed sort of like drummer and I was in a band and we were not very good. And um, I just wanted to be around the scene. I wanted to sort of like get involved in some way. And at the time, I was the only thing I could do was I was quite arty. I didn't have enough time to draw. So I picked up a camera. This is going back 30 odd years ago. And uh, I kind of discovered that I was okay at it at the time. And I just sort of ran with it. And I loved being around the bands and around the scene and documenting it more than anything. I think that's a good way of putting it, like documenting. I think when I studied photography, there was like, you, you had to sort of go into these brackets. And I think music photography is a lot of like documenting. And it's kind of like with that picture, trying to tell the story of that hour of music. Um, I think that's a really strong way of doing it. I think I think there's different types of music photographers. There's there's people that will take a picture and very good pictures of people playing the guitar or singing, and it looks good on a review site or a blog. There are people that document an event, which I kind of put myself in that category. Um, in that, it's about the whole day and. I'm interested in seeing the crowd, the venue, not just what's happening on stage. Obviously, that's the important thing. That's why we're there. But you've also got to document the event. And so I kind of see myself as a music photographer, documentary, street photographer on a stage is the best way of describing it. And I soon learned that doing the bog standard person with a guitar or person with a microphone was not enjoyable for me and I, I felt that I needed to try and do something a little bit more inclusive shall we say and, and, and take pictures of, of the crowd and the, the scenery around me. And I think that works I think you do sort of encapsulate that crowd there's a lot of your images I've seen one sticks in my hand of like I think it's Albert Hall um, where it's like the fish eye lens when it's all fanned out is, is it um, so I, stuff like that is sort of like you can barely see the band in it but you've sort of captured the essence of the gig and I think like you say that's like the documentary side of it. I think one thing that this sort of last 12 months has taught us all is that music is amazing, uh, keeps us happy and keeps us sane and all the rest of it but a gig we need a crowd and the people make the gig and I can't wait to get back to places like the Ritz or the Albert Hall, night and day the castle, no matter where it is, and document people enjoying the smile on the faces, the jumping around and all the rest of it. And that's that's it's important to, to record. It's a social event and it should always be recorded, I, I think, anyway. Agreed. For that, there must be such a difference photographing. I've, I've photographed alongside you at the Ritz, actually, but like the difference from photographing in places like Jimmy's and in Castle where you're in the middle of the crowd and photographing somewhere where there's like a pit. How do you... like? go from one to the other? Um, <clears throat> I've always kind of followed a, a very loose pattern of sort of, in my head, because being a, a failed drummer, as we've already discussed, I've always tried to focus originally on the drummer. So I try and get the drum first. And if I've got access to all areas, I try and get on stage. So the hardest person to catch is always a drummer. Um, I always try and get the drummer I then try and get a crowd shot from the stage just to show the, the overall sort of appearance of the thing. If I've not got access to all areas and I'm in sort of a smaller night and day sort of venue sort of size without a pit, um, although I'm still normally on stage, uh, I'll, I'll try and sort of get in the crowd. And I know a lot of people sort of, I, I can stand and watch photographers and I don't know what it is, but I see a lot of photographers that will stand at the front of night and day, or they'll stand at the front of the stage 
and they'll go from one side, they'll take a picture, and then they'll go to another side, take a picture, and they'll go to another side and take a picture, which which is great. Um, but everybody's doing the same thing. And so if you're wanting to get just that person with guitar or the, the lead singer, or if you want to do that, that's great. That's how it works. But I'm trying to get the pictures that are just a little bit different. And so I'll be in the crowd a lot of the time because that's, you know, and a lot of people will look at me and think, what are you doing going in the crowd with like all this expensive gear and everything? But that's what it's, it's a tool to, to record something. So I'll, I'll be in the crowd. I enjoy that. Um, or I'll be on the stage or be in a really strange position. Uh, more often than not showing my ass. Um, just to try and get a picture. I think you've got a cat because, like you said, I was the sort of person who was, right, I'll stand here, get pictures from here, then I'll move over to this side, get pictures from here. And I was thinking, that all right, I've, I've got this great picture of you. But then when it comes to, like, putting it out and you, you're thinking, oh, somebody behind me has took that on their phone and got the exact same picture, and, like, yeah. makes the difference because that's sort of what made me stop doing it a bit. Like, I was going, I was taking pictures, and then it'd be like, oh, well, somebody in the crowd's took the exact same picture on their phone. Uh, and that's getting used to my pictures. Not so. Wh where's the sort of line between like a, a photographer and just somebody taking the picture on a phone? Um, I think a picture is a picture, and I think with modern modern smartphones, they can take a picture. They can capture a moment. Um, the only thing with a with a smartphone is it can't make a picture. And, and what I mean by that is it's the person that's pressing that button. Um, if I, if I was to go to a gig with my smartphone, which is an old knackered iPhone, um, I can still take photos and I could still document the event. There's not a problem there. And that, that's just because I can do it. Um, but when it comes to printing them out or putting them on, on display, they're not going to be great pictures because, you know, I said about sort of making the photo. We make the photo because we are... We are making, we are controlling that machine. We artistically are operating the shutter speed, the ISO, the, the f-stop and stuff like that. An iPhone is just a point and shoot. And so for us to get a technical shot at a gig is very difficult. It's doable, but it is very difficult to get a nice clean image. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know if that answers your question, but I, I think, <laughs> I think, I welcome all pictures. I'm not scared of people taking photos um, because at the end of the day, it's all about the band and about the scene, about the music. I'm just part of it. Yeah, I think that's a good way to say you're sort of part of it. You're, I know you're very close with a lot of bands and that's why you've got a lot of the shots because you're sort of one of the bands, so to speak. And there's a lot of like, especially bands with like No Hot Ashes that you was really close with. You were sort of like the extra member. You sort of was on the stage with them and getting everything. And I think... Like the, the behind the scenes and the backstage stuff is really important to get because that's the stuff the fans can't can't see and can't get. So that's a really good doc thing to document. Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, going back to bands like No Ashes and people, I I think it's important that you identify a band <clears throat> um, at the early stages and get close to a band and. I will always work, and, and when I say work, I use that word loosely because, I mean, this is, this is my career. This is, this is how I feed my kids. So um, I do charge, but I also do free stuff as well. And, and with bands like Noah Ashes, I saw them at the beginning. I was at the first or one of the very first gigs that they did. I saw potential with them. I knew the manager very well, Mr. Peeps. And... I just believed in them. And so I built up that trust with the band. Um, and I think that's important that as a photographer, you've got to be, you've got to be in that. You've, you've always got to work with those bands, the bands, that are the first gigs, the startup bands, the under the radar bands, and hopefully grow with them. And that's what I always try to do. I don't always work with the big bands, I work with all bands. How do you sort of do that? It's, it's one thing recognising all oh, this band are going to be big, but how do you get to be the main guy, the guy they turn to when there's 10, 15 other people trying to battle for the same thing? What what puts you above the rest? I don't, I'm still trying to find that, how to be the main man. Um, 
one of the frustrating things, um, and it, I take it very personally, it hurts, that I'll be working with a band where, and again, loosely working, where I believe I've got the trust and the, the sort of the understanding of that band to work with them, to develop them and to grow with them. And you get a relationship that, for whatever reason, sort of breaks down. And that, that, that hurts because you sort of, you feel like you've invested time. And not often these are, this is stuff you're doing for nothing, doing it for free because you believe in that band and, and you understand there's no there's not a lot of money in music until you get to the very top end. Yeah. So I've worked with a lot of bands where I've done a lot of free stuff with them and I've loved doing that. And then all of a sudden they just disappear. They just stop or someone else comes in. And that that's hard. Um, but how do you stop that? I don't know. Um, and I think, I don't know, I, I, I don't know, it's, that's, that's hard, but you, you've just got to be around the band and somehow click and be there for them. That's going back to the, uh, the original question. Yeah, I think and the, like the longer you're with the band, you sort of know them rather than you can go up to anybody and take a picture. But when you get to know them, you sort of get more of a relaxed feeling and you know exactly what they want from the picture. And I think the longer you, you work with a specific band, the easier it gets with that band because you know where they're going to move on stage, you know what they're going to do next. And that's sort of a lot of it, that sort of preemptive thing of, I know you're going to jump here, so I'm going to wait for this shot. And like, how do you gauge that with newer bands as well? There, there is an element of that. There is, there is, you know, you kind of, you know roughly what their stage play is going to be. Um, but I think... But for me, I don't know. I, th I think being a, a former drummer has helped me because drumming is all about numbers and patterns and things like that and emotions. And so for me, I somehow I'm able to sort of stand back and listen to a, to a band perform. I've never seen, you know, and I think my advice to anyone starting off in this industry is if there's a video out there of a live performance of a band that you've not shot before, try and see what they do. You might get there and they might not even move or they might be bonkers on stage and jumping off drum kits and stuff. So it's ideal to sort of at least see them. But for me, I, I just I just kind of know when the drum fills are coming. And when there's a drum fill coming, I know it's going to be an exciting moment. And that's just a gut feeling that I feel. So I don't know, it's just something that I just, I just feel really. So it's just like the experience and just sort of, just going with the flow of it. And I know a lot of them, the pictures you've took are because you know the band. And I think there's one, I think it's Strange Bones, uh, where he's, he's bending down and swearing at you. I mean, you've got that, he wouldn't have done that to any other photographer because he didn't know anybody down there, but you had that that bond where he was coming and he was looking down your lens and sort of getting that. And like, how important is that connection with the band? And just that, with all the ones. That was, the um, that was that, that's the one where Bobby's sticking these up at me. Yeah. And, uh, that was the first time I'd photographed them. And uh, it was at the Ritz, and they were supporting Cabbage and the Blinders, I think, at the time. Yeah. And I'd heard of them, and I'd, I'd, I'd sort of listened to them. I'd never actually seen them. And when they came on, I thought, Jesus, these are amazing. These are great. I can't believe it. They, they move around. And I was just... I'm very much sort of in the face of people. And I always, I think there was only two or three photographers in the pit at a time. And I was making sure that I was making contact with the, the right people in the band, the people that I thought were right for me. Um, and one of the tricks that I do, if I think a band is going to do it, um, it's something that um, Jim Marshall used to do. Um, uh, a great photographer from back in the day in the 60s who used to shoot, you know, Jimi Hendrix and people. But he would hold the camera and he'd be talking to the people and he'd be telling them to fuck off or sticking the Vs up for them. And he's taking pictures or doing something to kind of annoy them to get in the face. Yeah. And I don't know, but I just tend to think that Bobby was running around everywhere and I just pointed at him. And went like, and, you know, and 
come in and did that. And he came over to me and just went like that. And I don't know, I, I'm sure that communication helps. And I, I, do, I do that quite a lot. You know. Yeah, trying to get a reaction, trying to get him to do something for you that no other photographer can get. Because everyone can get that picture of him stood at the microphone, stood still. I think yeah. the difference is getting that that interaction with him and you. Not every picture you don't want them looking down the lens of the camera. You kind of want to avoid that a bit, but just getting that is what puts you above in it. And I, something that else, like you mentioned about, like in the pit, two or three. Sometimes I've been to gigs where in there, and there's like ten people in there. How do you sort of compete within that? Right. Um, I don't know. I, don't, I, I wouldn't say I compete with any because. Um, I don't know. I, I I get into a zone, I suppose, and um, I don't know. I'm I'm dancing around the stage, trying to. I'm, I'm not. I always I'm always conscious of the crowd. They've paid to go in and see the band, so I always know that I can't get in the way. But I'm always. I don't want what I consider a flat shot. I want to try and document something happening, and that could be, you know, someone throwing a guitar at someone or. Yeah, you know, we don't we don't know what's going to happen, and it's kind of winging it a little bit. But um, but yeah, I just I just sort of as as I started to tell you at the beginning, I, had, I kind of follow a, a, a kind of a pattern. I yeah. see you know getting on the drummer and then going to the lead guitarist and the singer, um, and sort of cover all bases really. How does it work with other photographers? I know that you said you weren't really competing, but are there some that sort of help out? I know you help me out and. Like, but are there some that do and some that sort of just think they're better and get in the way? What's your sort of experience with that? I think I can only speak really for people that I know in Manchester, but everyone, we've got a decent crowd in Manchester, a decent group of people. Um, um, I've never had any problems in Manchester. And it's always been, everyone's very supportive. Everyone will look after each other. We're in there to, to, to get our pictures. We, we, we can all see a different picture. We can all take a different So I don't think competition is there. Um, I always look out for other people. And if I think someone's struggling, I'll, I'll you know, see if I can offer any sort of assistance. And, and they do the same to me. It's, it, you know, and I think it's important we do that. Um, but I've been in other parts around the country and in parts of Europe as well, where I think photographers, and I don't know if it's just me, I don't know, because I'm very northern, but I just find that certainly if you go down sort of south of Birmingham, it can get a little bit sort of stressful at times, where people don't really know you and can be a bit sort of picky with you. I don't know. Um, mm. <laughs> Well, it's sort of like the worst experience you've had with that then, with like other photographers or just the management of it, like with the people controlling the pit where you can come in and come out and things like that. Um, in terms of in the pit, um, if, if I, I mean, I, I don't work for the press anymore, but when, when I used to work for like blogs and things, it was always a case of arriving and, and getting your, your photo pass for the first three songs. And, and I always used to go and introduce myself to the, you know, security manager at the side of the pit, just making sure that, you know, what are the rules, what are the regulations, what can I do, what can't I do? My name's Nietzsche, I'm Trust the Fox. Um, if I get in the way, kick me out. And I tell them that because they're there to protect us, protect the band and protect the crowd. Um, so I've always made a, a big effort to sort of like introduce myself. And I think that's important. Um, and even even with having triple A pass, and I always tell people I'm going to be going on stage. Um, I think you've also got to be aware that the other photographers. I always try and introduce myself if I don't know them. Keep your bag out of the way so we don't trip over it, <laughs> and the usual sort of things like that, really. And uh, just watch out for them. What made you stop doing it for press then? And like, what's what's the difference? Um, good point, good question. Um, I work with a couple of blogs, um, and I just found it frustrating really that I'd 
take the photos, they'd use a couple of the photos. I just didn't enjoy it in the end. And um, I think my style of photography didn't quite work with some of the blogs. And so I decided about three or four, well, about three or four years ago now, that I wanted to work directly with bands. And there's a couple of the bigger bands that I work with where they want pretty much control of the imagery. So I take photos on their behalf. I've yeah. still got full credit, full ownership of the, the, the photos, but they trust me to get the right photos for them that they can use on social media because I think we're transitioning now away from being a, a tour photographer, stroke live music photographer into a, a creative sort of content provider. You sort of touched on it a bit there with like sort of the credits, but how does like the sort of copyright thing work and sort of what, what right do the band have for your pictures that you've took and what do you own from it? It very much depends on the, the deal that you've done with the band. Um, in terms of copyright, you always own the copyright unless you've sold license. The person that owns that photo is the person that presses a button. So um, if you made that photo, it's yours. Um, I always tell the bands that they can use the photos for social media as long as they credit me because the last thing I, if, if someone goes on social media and nicks my photos, um, it's lost forever. So I'm trying to hold on to it uh, because that's my pension, which isn't that far away. Um, so I think it's important that the bands understand that without credit, uh, I get annoyed. <laughs> um, and everybody knows that, I hope, now. I think from from sort of my side of it, I think there is that sort of bit of confusion. These bands that, obviously, when I've used sort of headers on our website and just one of the bands that we work with, Brooke Cino, they did a photo shoot. And I think there was just a bit of confusion with with that. And they started putting the pictures up on Facebook and then the person who took the picture said, oh, no, no, you can't do that. I think there's a bit of confusion about that. And like when I asked for the poster for... I have a, a gig, a photo for like a gig poster or for a header for a magazine. Like, oh yeah, use this one. And what, where do I stand in that as like a sort of magazine or a promoter in terms of I've used your photo, the band have given me that photo, but actually you've not given permission for that. I think it's a communication thing, as as it always is, and that's that's a good sort of politician's way out of this. But um, for me, and and there's, there's 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 a few things. It's always happening to me, and it does me head in where. I've taken photos for bands and I've sent them some photos and said, these are great, use them for your social media as long as you credit me. And then there's been other bands that have paid me and I've sent them a load of pictures and said, you can use these for social media. But if you're using them for a promoter, let me know so I can tell the promoter what the rules are. Um, sometimes that that very important element of um, let me speak to the promoter so as they know what the rules are get sort of lost I think along the way and I think it's important that I'm not being a twat when I say that it needs to be credited because I see myself and, and certainly with the bigger bands that we said about before when you know I'm, I'm employed by bands as a as a content creator and a I'm a gatekeeper for their imagery. And that's that's an important element that people have got to remember that I take a photo, I give them the band because they paid me, and then someone nicks that picture and uses it on some random website to chat shit about something. I'm the person that's been given, I've got accreditation to do that, I'm the gatekeeper. So that image is then used for selling ice cream I'm a twat. So I've got to control my imagery for the, on behalf of the band. So it's important that everybody understands that. Um, I don't know how much bands because I don't know whether, I'm assuming at some point I've probably used one of yours, but I've never had a band come to me and go, oh, you, I've got this picture for the, the poster. Uh, such a body 
one, they don't even tell me who's took the picture and two, I've never been told, oh, well, will you contact the photographer and I just start out with them as to what to do with it? I think, I think, I think it's, it's in, the, the amount of times that people take a picture off the internet, and just, and it happens all the time. It's happened the other day to me where someone will, I've sent an email to someone and said, let me just clarify, what, what, you, that picture you've used for this poster it's a live picture. I get a lot of my live pictures used for kick posters. And it annoys the hell out of me because on a number of reasons, which I'll come to in a minute, but when I said to the promoter, why are you using my, where's, who's give you permission to use this image? And nine times out of 10, it's been a mistake. And they've had the image sent to them either from the band or they've just gone on Facebook and robbed it. And it is, they have robbed it. And um, and that annoys me. But, um, and they can't do it. And to ex- and I feel a twat then saying, it's my picture, it's only a picture. You can't you can't use that picture without, you know, speaking to me because I'm the gatekeeper of it. Um, <laughs> but I, d- I don't know, it's, I've, I've got my train of thought there, but we, 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 I was going to come on to another point that, that is sort of, I think there's 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 also an element of if a gate poster is important, the picture that's in it is important as well. So there's a value to that. And, and I think if I'm gifting pictures to a band, the promoter's taken a cut of the takings and they're using my picture to promote the gig. And I, I think I think me as a creator of that image should be, you know, paid for doing that. And oh, a few things that really annoy me is um, I, I get paid on different levels of different things. But in terms of a lot of the live stuff I do is free. So a band could get a gig poster for free. Whereas if most gig posters are post for photos, um, which is a paid job. So I'm doing myself and... My screen keeps going off. I, I'm doing it myself, and I'm also doing um, co-photographers out of business potentially because they're not doing paid-for jobs. Which I think there's a lot of that with like any sort of photography, any sort of art. It's a case of like, oh well, it's not cost you to take that picture. Why should I pay for it? And a lot of people think, oh, well, will you just come take the picture? Be my mate. How do you get to that stage of charging? Because I never got to that. I, I was taking pictures and then people asking me, oh, will you come take a picture? And as soon as you go, oh, yeah, yeah but it'll be this much. All right, and they're done. They'll go on to the next person because there's that many people who will do it for free because they feel that they need to. That's how you get into it. So how do you sort of break into that getting paid stage? <laughs> if I knew that, <laughs> I'd, uh, I think um, I'm dead soft anyway. And, and I think going back to the fact that if there's a band that I like, I'll give everything and, 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 and very rarely get paid for it because I believe in them. But I, I think the golden rule for me is if a band approaches me and says, we want you to come along and take photos, are you available on this day? I will often say, well, I am available, but I'm not a free service. If I approach a band and say, I'm interested in working with you. Um, can we look at the overall picture and see if there's a deal to be made? Then I will sort of start. It, it, I don't know. I think there's, for me, I think it's, it's if a band approaches you, there's, there's there should be, you know, they want you. Like they want yeah, they're they're hiring you in essence, yeah. aren't they? If they come to you, they're saying, we want you to work for us. We want you to do this. But then they're going, oh, we don't, we don't want to pay you for it, though. Right. There's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of people that, that as you say it's only a photo and I, I, I use that phrase all the time it's only a photo you know if it is only a photo if a band only want pictures go off to someone else I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm not just my, I, I respect my work more than just a photo I'm getting I, you know I, Sound, I sound twatty now, but um, one of my biggest clients came to me and said, we want you to come and do our cover our tour. 
And it was a band that I liked and had shot before previously, and they liked my work. And they approached me directly and said, um, we don't want to discuss rates or anything. We think you're worth X amount. And I, I snapped their hand off because it was to me, it was great. And I didn't have to get into that sort of back and forth of sort of, you know, rates and stuff like that. In, in terms of like rates, because that was something I sort of struggled with, what, what do you charge? I feel like we're not talking photographing at the rates of the MEM. I'm talking you're going down, you're starting doing a couple of gigs and you, you're just getting into it. You've got a good image. What sort of money should you be charging if you're going to charge? It depends what your situation is, as always, and what you value yourself at. And and what the, I mean, at the end of the day, as we've said already, there's, there's, there's not a lot of money out there for the bands. Um, but one of the things that I've started doing now is I'll say to a band, when, when they get in touch with me and say, we want to come down and take our pictures of, of a live performance, or if they want a promotional photo, things like that, I'll ask them how important that photo is and what do you think that that picture is going to generate for you? What What's the return on that picture? And, I mean, if someone wants me to go down and cover a gig, I'll tend to say, well, how many, uh, how, how many tickets do you think my pictures will sell on your next gig? And ask yourself for a ticket. And more often than not, they might say, well, your picture will sort of, you know, generate an extra 20 ticket sales. And if they're selling an extra 20 tickets and it's five quid a ticket, that's that's my live performance fee for them. Yeah. That's, that's, that's one of the ways I, I would sort of pitch it, really, you know. Um, if, if my pictures aren't going to sell tickets, then use someone else's. And I think there kind of is that as well of you can use somebody else, but it's not one photographer takes one picture. So like there's people like like you and like Paul Husband and um, Amelia who's like in blocks who takes pictures for us, all really good photographers, but have a different image. So there's a band that you might not be able to work with because their style is a bit like different to what you do, it might be a bit more of a filtered look they're going for. And I think there is a bit of that as well where you might not be the right photographer for that person. And I think, do you point that out to a band or does a band have to recognise that? Um. I think I think we it's important that we find our own style of, of photography first and foremost. Um, I agree. I, I I don't because I'm very much I'm a realist in terms of the imagery that I take and and I capture the moment. So a lot of my performance photos are non-filtered. They are edited the high contrast, black and white or colour, but I don't. You know, there's, there's a lot of people out there at the moment that are doing very stylized live performance photos. I don't do that um, because I'm a realist. I'm not. A, I'm not a. Um, I, I don't do that style. Um, but I think I agree. I think there's there's, there's people out there that that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question really. But I think like making your own style is like unique. Like it's it's what people recognise you. I can see a picture scrolling through Facebook, and I'll know it's by you. Or I can, I can scroll through and like see like Paul Husband's pictures of like um, is it elbow that he's talking ones like that. I'm like that's that's him because it's such a unique style, and you've got that sort of framing, especially sort of like sort of like promo shots as opposed to live shots. You can sort of do that a bit more in, and it's getting that sort of styling in what. How do you go about that on more like a, a technical level? How do you I, do that promo thing? In terms of promo, I, I bands will come to me and, and, and the way that I, I do my live performance stuff is marketing a lot of the time. In that I take the photos and I get your promo, promo work. And um, with regards to doing promo work, um, it's really... I'll sit down and discuss with them what the, what their sort of vision is, what they, what sort of imagery style they like. Um, come up with some kind of kind of an idea, and as you say, like the Paul Husband sort of great sort of you know classical painty sort of imagery, or if it's you know the, the, the conventional sort of indie for men up against the wall sort of 
looking mean and moody. So I do all the different variations, but it's it's basically sat down and discussed with the band and the, the direction they want to go in, as opposed to just sort of like taking a picture. Um, but it is very much a two-way thing. We sit down and talk about the sort of injury they like and the injury that I can produce for them. In terms of promo stuff, it's very it's created in whatever way we need to do it. And I can shoot in pretty much any way, really. From like equipment sort of thing, then what what's like the basics you would need to sort of go into it? Um obviously the camera and the lenses. Um <laughs> but I, I, I'd say probably 50% of my work is done without flash or strobe lights in any way. I think it's important that you've got a nice location to take the photo. Um, flashes do work, especially if you look at like the Paulsman type of work. Most of this stuff is done with flash. Um, so, you know, if you've got an assistant holding a, a flash or a soft box or an umbrella or something like that always helps or a stand because a lot of my stuff is sort of run and gun on the streets of Manchester. So if I park on my car and get all my gear out, it, it looks a bit sort of like, you know, I can pay day to a lot of people that are down there. So I, I, I try and sort of run and gun it. So a lot of the time, the street sort of style band shots that I do, it's, it's just me and the camera. You don't need a lot of gear. Um, but again, that's, that's, Discuss between you and the band the style they're going for. So I uh, well, you you've met the band, you've you've figured out what what you want to do, uh, and then you take the pictures. Where like, what's the technique? You take it in like raw, do you put it into like Lightroom, edit it. How do you sort of go about it? Nah. I always shoot raw. Um, there's, I mean, you, you can shoot JPEG if you want to, but JPEG is very sort of it's a compressed file, so it doesn't give you a lot of creativity after the fact. Um, so I always shoot raw, take it into Lightroom, sometimes into Photoshop to play around it a little bit more, and then just drop box the band, uh, the, the drop box the images over to the band. And quite quite a simple process then, uh, nice and easy. Just yeah, it's easy. Oh. It, 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 it should be easy. The, the, the hardest part, the hardest part is getting the band together um, and picking a day which is right for you. Um, did a band shot recently. I mean, obviously, with, with what's going on with COVID, it's all going to be done, masks and all that sort of shit. But um, did a shot recently, and it was a snowy day. And we'd got this idea. It was going to be inside an album cover, Gatefold. We had this idea, and we had to go up on this, like, sort of snowy hill, and it was all slippy and slidey everywhere. Um, but, yeah, that was... That was it, it, Sometimes you rub with an idea and go with it and you just don't know until you get there what it's gonna be like. So you've gotta you've gotta somehow it is quite the hardest part is getting the whole idea together and then taking the shots twenty or thirty minutes. What's like the favourite one you've done? Because you've done some quite not just band against the wall, and all the one you did for Danterville's was all like clown costume and sort of things like that for their sort of last D B cover. So what like what's what's the best photo shoot you've done? I don't. I don't know. It, it changes all the time. Um, I, I, I'm one of these people that takes a photo and sort of moves on to the next one. I, d I don't know. I, it embarrasses me looking back at photos as well sometimes um, because I always think, "Why the hell did I do that? And why didn't I do this?" Um, but I did a I did a shoot, and it was quite a fun one with a band called um, Scuttlers. Um, about a year or so ago, well, more than a year ago, about two years ago now. And Scuttlers wanted to be a little bit sort of like, I don't know, Scully. And so I thought, well, I've got an idea to do something. And we ended up doing about four or five really funny things to the extent that I think they went with one that I think there's only one that they could use in the end because <laughs> the other ones were just a bit too bizarre. But that, that was nothing, it was, it was just putting them in a silly situation, really, and taking a photo. Well, like, you touched on it before then, about, like, you called it, like, a creative, sort of, how you work now, rather than, like, just taking the picture, because a lot of, like, social media 
what's what's the difference with that from when you first started out which i guess was like before so all the social media was sort of the big things now do you like do bands need more photo shoots within the year because usually you would take a picture for the album and that picture would get reused in a magazine or whatever you won't be posting out two three times a week yeah there's there's, there's loads of photos i mean I'm, I'm working with a band at the moment that's um been away and come back again and we're pretty much doing like weekly jobs with them at the minute where it involves from album covers, single covers, uh, gig posters, videos, performance videos, live performance videos, um, the full thing, the full package really. I think as content creators, which I think most photographers need to be now, we, we you know, I, I see myself as a tour photographer. But within that remit of a tour photography, you've got to video a lot of stuff. And that could involve anything from just a, a chit-chat interview about what's coming out in the next 12 months to crazy sealing us just for, you know, a 30-second clip to go on Twitter. Um, so, yeah, I think there's, there's, there's a lot of content creation at the moment with video and stuff like that as well, which is important. How much of that is sort of like staged all that? backstage sort of laughing spraying is that just you being there thinking that i need to catch this or is some of it oh redo that oh that was good will you just do that while i get my camera what how much of it is sort of acted if anything it's not acted at all it's it's if anything it's it's edited strongly edited there's a lot of things that happen backstage that um will not be shown um <laughs> But then again, there's there's very few times when a band I've never I've never needed to tell a band to do something. They always do something crazy. There'll be there'll be moments where I could be doing videoing backstage and I might record twenty minutes and there might only be two minutes of useful content. Um, but I've never had to tell a band to you know spray champagne or anything like that because they just do it anyway or they're just having a laugh and a joke and I think most of the the creation that the, the creativity comes from the editing it and cutting it down more than anything. You sort of mentioned there about like some of the stuff you take backstage you can't show I remember being at a talk with you um, that you did at Jimmy's must be a good few years ago now with a, with a few other photographers and I can't remember the name of the guy but he was saying that he took pictures of, I think it was Pete Doherty shooting heroin backstage, and he was like, that's how I made my money, you've got to sell that. For me, that's not right, but what's your thoughts on on that? I think it's disgusting to, to do that because, you know, um, I've, I've been in situations, I mean, it's rock and roll, and it's only a very small portion of people that do things, but, I mean... I, I don't, I think that's a little bit sort of paparazzi. And I certainly wouldn't want people to take pictures of me uh, taking, doing my work with me not hanging out or something like that. That's just it's not right. Doing. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, we all, we all know that I have got a 12 inch cut, but I mean, we don't <laughs> want to advertise the fact, do we? Um, <laughs> but, I don't know, I just think we're there to make a band look cool. We're not there to to document mental health or drug addiction or grammatise stuff. And, I, and to make money out of shit like that, is, that's, that's destroying our industry. I think there is that divide between like a, a photographer and paparazzi. I don't know whether you watched it, that uh, Britney Spears documentary that's been on. Yeah, and, yeah. And, that's all paparazzi. And he was interviewing somebody who, who was chasing the car and sort of taking pictures. And he, he were like, well, she never told us to stop. So we thought it was okay. And where's the sort of common sense in that? And like, I remember you've told me a while ago that you'd, you'd been with a band and you'd, you'd been around while they were doing like, either doing drugs or doing things they shouldn't have. And like, because they trusted you, they were like, oh yeah, you can, st you can stay in it. And I think once you start releasing them pictures, do you get sort of like kicked out of the club, so to speak? Like, oh, we don't want him backstage because he's going to start leaking what we're doing. 
I, I, I've been with bands where band managers have said, take a picture of this. And I've felt really bad taking pictures. I've never shown them pictures, and I will never show those pictures. I've, I've just been, been told to do something, so I've done it. But I don't think, you know, and I'm, don't get me wrong, there's, there's only a very small amount of people that do all this sort of shit. And, you know, I don't think drugs are big and clever and all the rest of it. So I'm not promoting them. Um, and I just, I just think, I, I don't know, I just, for me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take pictures. When, when I do a lot of street photography, I don't take pictures of homeless people on the streets. You know, I don't do upskirts. So why would I do stuff like that? And it's, it's just, it's just wrong. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Is there like sort of any other sort of like unwritten rule or sort of etiquette to photography and what you put out? I'm there to make the band look cool. I'm not there to make them, you know. So if you do something silly, like stupid fall off stage or something like that, I'm not going to take a picture. Well, I might take a picture of that, <laughs> but I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, use that imagery because. I'm there to document the coolness. Um, I just don't see drugs as being cool, so. No. Um, so, I, I don't know. Like, where, where's that line? And so, sort of like, what, what, obviously, there's a lot of, like, oh, this will sell. What, what's the difference between, like, getting that picture that you think will sell to the newspaper and sort of getting that picture that is going to get framed on your wall? Well, as I said, I'm, I'm not involved in media, so I don't need to... I, I wouldn't want to take a picture to sell. Uh, I don't think there's many newspapers I want to sell a picture to anyway in the first place, but if I was to take a, a paparazzi-style picture, I wouldn't... I, that's not me. That's not what I'm there for. I'm there as an artist, not as a paparazzi. Um, I think... I, I never know which pictures sell. As a, as a print, I can never work it out, and I wish I could. Um, but I think I just, I just got some kind of morals. I guess it's because you know I'm, I'm getting on a bit now, being 28, 29, and I just think I just couldn't. I think I've just grown a bit older and wouldn't really want to. This is a moral thing. I just don't know. <laughs> you spoke then about that sort of taking pictures. I've actually got one. Of yours that I bought off you from an exhibition. Mm. You know, uh, like, how does it work on that? How do you so sort of get the picture and sell it and getting it printed properly? Because it's, it's not just printing it off on your A3 printer in your cupboard. Right? Uh, I send all prints away. Um, I mean, in terms of eye on the photos, I always ask the manager of the band or the publicist or whatever and say, I'm going to do a printed roll. It's all right if I use this picture. Um, they always say yes. I've had a situation where I was going to do a printed book and a band said no, or the manager said no. Um, but most of the time, it's it's always good to ask the band if you know I can do this. Um, get them printed. Use a local printer. Um, I always do limited prints as well, so I normally start like ten at a time. Just sign them. I think that's one of ten as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Second of ten, this one. So yeah. not have thought it's going to be else first. Yeah, I've still got another eight of them to go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've started recently using a, um, a company down in London, which, which has worked really well. But they do a, a slightly higher-end print, different papers and stuff like that, which is less profitable for me, but it's... A nicer print, and I, I started doing that. Um, so yeah, is that like a big, a big way of sort of your income and sort of like how now that you say you don't do it for sort of press anymore, where sort of like you get paid, where they would pay you to go out and take a picture? Is that sort of like where the money is there when you, you go to a gig, you take the picture, and then you go right, I'm going to sell this picture. Nobody's hired me to come here, but I've come and I've took this picture, and that's my fee because I'm going to sell ten versions of this picture. I have used that in the past as a, as a sort of like a negotiation tool and said, well, there's, there's, there's one band that I've worked with quite a lot and they've, they've never really paid me. And I've always said, 
if I can sell a couple of prints in the show, would you be all right with that? And that would cover my fee. Um, and so I do that quite a lot of the time. So, yeah, um, you can use it as a negotiation tool, I suppose. I don't sell as many prints as I should. Um, I think, I, I mean, I, there's, there's times where I look back and think, well, I should sell. I did actually, one of the bands that I work with, and we were toying with the idea of, of, of selling two or three prints a show at a lower cost and doing sort of like, selling them in like 20s and 30s instead of just 10s. And we did look at doing that and then I just thought it was just a headache to do um, and it was just a problem. I'm not, I'm not the best when it comes to like putting pictures in tubes and stuff like that, which is why I use a company down in London now because they do it for me. Um, so it, it, it is it, print. I should sell more prints, but it's not. It's not the biggest. That's just something that I sell and make a bit of money from. It's not the biggest earner for me. Like. Do you sort of exhibit your work? I know we, we did that one uh, in Northern Quad. Was it Crowbar or something like that? Where where I got that? Uh, how often do you sort of like exhibit your work, or would you want to do it more? I have I've done exhibits, um, and it is it is something that I've looked at. I, I did I did one. Um, I don't know if you was uh, is that where you bought that print from? Where we did, did we did one in it's, it's shut down not long after, and they've got about ten of my prints in there. Yeah, but, it, was, uh, it was in, in the corner of Northern Quarter, and it like there was an upstairs to it. I can't remember the name of the place. It was only a small, small little pub. Yeah, I, I think that was one of my first ones I did, and um, I remember my missus said, "Get a load of wine in, get a load of red wine and white wine." Well, I did that, and uh, no ashes came down and next it all. <laughs> so they were drunk within like 20 minutes of, but anyway, um, yeah, I did that one there. I've done a few other little shows along the way, but I've not, I've never really, I don't know, I'm not a very social animal, really. I don't. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> That's maybe, right. you're a heavy kick of beans. Maybe I should do more, maybe I should do more sort of uh, exhibitions, gallery sort of shows and stuff like that. I know. I know. Not long ago, they were they were talking about looking at doing like a gallery in Manchester for. We've got some really good street photographers here as well, um, and they were saying that maybe we should have some kind of a full time gallery sort of opening where we can put our images in and hopefully sell to the public. Would you want your work in somewhere like that? You know, like your standard sort of white walled gallery or. You got a bit more of like an aesthetic to it. I was watching like a documentary on Banksy and sort of his um, exhibits where it was like in a warehouse and all sorts of like mad stuff because it was like unconventional. He didn't want his picture hung on a frame in in a white wall gallery. And for me, I think that's what where I would prefer my sort of music stuff like in in a ve in a music venue on a brick wall. You know, something a bit different. Uh, something about like a a photo, like a music photo on a white wall doesn't really sit for me. Uh, it does. I, I, I like, I like, um, I had friends who, um, photographers that did a, an exhibition under the Mancunian Way a few years ago and they, they decided to do massive, great big prints. And unfortunately I couldn't go, I was, I was out with a band at the time, so I didn't, I missed it unfortunately. But it was a really good success, apparently, where they, they, they got these massive, great big pieces of wood, put these massive, great big pictures on them. Um, and it was under the Mancunian way. And I thought that was a good idea. I thought that was quite interesting. Um, so I think I, I often get asked by sort of venues and cafes and bars if I'd be interested in putting like four or five photos up on their wall. And I've often thought of doing that, but I just don't, I don't know, I've never done that. But I think that might be a direction for some of us to do in the future. Um, I think if I was to do an exhibition now, I'd, I'd probably, and I'm just thinking off the top of my head now, similar to my friends who did the one on the Mancunian way, I'd, I'd probably look at doing something like that. Um, doing something a bit odd. Yeah, that's what I'd, I'd prefer. And maybe it's something we can sort out, get a, get a few other people together and organise something a bit different and instead of just 
your white walled gallery and I mean when you're there we'd have queues stretching all around the streets we'd have to have uh, somewhere big <laughs> yeah might be somewhat somewhat cool to plan that I'm gonna have to do something very on rock and roll and plug if I you think Ian the laptop <laughs> is on low power so you walk into the in a quick tour you're out well that's it <laughs> yeah um let me just put that in there so the actual sort of issue <sighs> yeah, um, yeah. I think exhibitions are a good way of. I don't, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I think if I was going to do an exhibition, I'd do something a bit sort of strange, and I don't know what that strange would thing would be just yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, like the festival side of sort of photography? How does that sort of work for you then? I know I saw you at Kendall, and you. March me backstage and trying to blag that I had the right passes to get through. <laughs> but how how is all that like festival, especially like for you who's been doing it for quite a while now, waking up in a tent in the morning? Right? Well, fest festivals are um are good for us for photographers because we can take lots of photos. Um but going back about about four or five years ago, I discovered or soon learned that certain festivals were only interested in agency photographers, people for Getty and people like that. And I was working at the time for small blogs and um, review sites. So and I, I just felt that we were getting stampled on by, stampled is that the right word, but we were getting sort of trod on by the publicists and, and they were just dealing directly with the Getty people. So it used to really piss me off that I could never get the, the main slots. So I thought, sorry, what I'll do is I'll go to the main slots and sell myself as a photographer to do it. So instead of going through the channels of trying to get on the festivals, I sold myself to the bands and then I could then get the AAA pass on the main stage, which gave me access to anywhere, really. That's the way I worked it, so I worked for the bands instead of the... So is that how you get your passes for most things? I know when I do festivals, I get like a press pass, but I've got to sort of like sleep with all the other sort of like festival goers who've got tickets. There's no sort of access all areas. There's a bit of a media bit we get to, but there isn't all the backstage passes. Is that what you get through, like working with a band to get in there? I try and work with the bands. So if, if I mean, it's not, it doesn't always work. Um, I had a situation last, um, there's, there's a festival up in Cumbria that we both know about. And um, I normally work on the main stage there with three or four of the bands that are on there. And it gave me access to all the all the different stages because I'd got AAA pass. Um, and then last year, I was working for, there's different ways of getting passes for festivals. Um, and I don't like, I, I, <laughs> there's, there's different ways of finding festivals sort of passes but if you can work for I was working at that event I was working for the people that were doing the, the video screens at the side of the stage and I one of my commercial clients is a, a camera manufacturer and I'm on a, a paid job for them taking pictures of their cameras uh, video in the stage so <laughs> On, at this festival in Cumbria that I won't name, the publicist came over to me and complained and said, you can't do that. And I said, well, I've, I've got to play pass and I'm taking pictures of that camera, taking pictures of Tom Jones. So why can I not do that? And she argued that um, I've not got clearance through their publicist to take images of them. So it kind of works, it doesn't work sometimes so with that what i did was i came out of the pit and then stood around inside the crowd 
because there's loads of people on the, in the on the crowd side taking pictures. Yeah, and they couldn't stop me. So I think there is that. I remember you told me I think it was at the Ritz where it was like, oh, you got that three shots, and he was like, you said as soon as it's done, get up on the top balcony, I'll get into the pit and get get pictures of everything else. <laughs> So some of my best pictures of um are on because I don't know if a lot of people understand this, but um certainly if you're working for media, you you know we get the first three songs. And um a lot of the venues and we don't know what's gonna happen obviously after COVID and everything, but a lot of the venues would sort of let you in, they'd walk you in, you take the first three songs. And then did let you get out and walk, go back and stand on the crowd side. Some of the venues actually kick you out now. Um, but some of my best shots were accidentally happening, walking out of the pit and walking back onto sort of like the balcony, which I sometimes leaked, reached in front. I got my camera out of my bag sometimes, I don't know why, and took shots where I shouldn't have taken shots from the balcony down because I wasn't supposed to do that, but some of my best shots were taken by accident. Like that. A lot of it's sort of like chancing it, even though, oh, you're not, you're not allowed to do it. It's like, oh, try me out. Can I, can I get in here? Or like I say, when you've introduced yourself to the security guard or somebody else like that, it's a bit more of, yeah, just let him in, let him do that, let him get away with that. So I think like, you know, just getting friendly with the staff of a venue or a festival does help. It, it, it does it does help and I mean I'm fully insured to do that because I've got public liability insurance and things but um so yeah I mean I, I do joke a little bit in terms of I've only done that a few times and um but yeah I think you, you've, you've got to you've got to get what you get you've got a you've got a job and your job is to make the band look cool if you were to like speak to yourself now, starting out, or somebody who's starting out now, what what would you say? Um, think long and hard about the questions you give when interviewed about, <laughs> about your job. Um, I don't know. I think you've just got to do it. I think. As I said to you before, I, I consider myself a realist photo photographer of a gig. Um, but again, some of my best photos are out of focus, uh, blurry. But there's something happening in that picture, so don't don't get tied down to. So, you know, we we can take a thousand photos at a gig, and we'll sit there and we'll, we'll sort of go through them and say, "I well, don't that's shit. I don't like that. I don't like this." Sometimes the best emotive photos are not perfect. And I think you've got to, you know, just don't go for that bog standard guitarist shot because everyone else has got that. Yeah, go for something a bit different. And I think that is it. When you're scrolling through, you've, you've took a thousand pictures at a gig and you're going through the little thumbnails picking. There's something that just stands out at you sometimes and you think, well, why? Because that picture's blurry or something's not right about it, but sometimes that picture is the one that just jumps out at you. There was, there was a picture I took at Blackthorn Festival um, ages ago of um, some young upstart band called The Blinders. And I'd shot them a few times and they are on a small stage. It was, it was Mr. Peeps' stage, I think, at Blackthorn. And I knew roughly what was going to happen. Uh, because at the end it always sort of went a bit sort of pear shaped and it was a big sort of like jumping on the drum kit and stuff. And I noticed the lead singer and guitarist Thomas um, at the end of the set went to take his guitar off. And because we was in a very dark environment, I was on a very slow short speed. So not too technical, but because he was swinging his guitar around his neck like this, and I was on a fisheye right in front of him, um, I couldn't freeze the motion. And he was swinging it around that hard, 
I could feel it wafting past my head, this Fender, Stratocaster, whatever it was. But I carried on clicking and I think I took about five shots and you can see the guitar so like just push over the top of my head. Uh, and it's really very blurry, but you can, it, it, it's one of my, well, there's a series of about five shots that are probably my favorites. And I think I've sold one set of these prints. Um, but in my eyes, it's probably my favorite series of shots, even though it's out of focus, technically incorrect. But the fact that I was like, fucking hell, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> eyes closed and looking away. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been really good speech and quite informative. So, I, like, if anybody who watches this has got any more questions, I'm sure you'd, you'd take the emails and answer them. Um, because, like, like I say, when I first started out and I got into this, but I wanted to be a music photographer and sort of failed at that and ended up doing, I don't know, whatever I'm doing now. Um, you was one of the people and Mr. Peach were the people who I sort of, I don't know, followed around and just, I knew that if you were there, I was in the right place. So it's, I think you're a good person to be with. I think, I don't think it's that hard. And the reason why it's not that hard is there's good people out there. And I think if you talk, we all make mistakes, and but we all know that we're nothing without the music and without the bands. So, you know, just talk. And if anybody, I know I've waffled quite a lot and talked a lot of shit, but um, just try it, enjoy it, love it. And if there's anyone that's struggling, just get in touch with me. Email me, find me on Twitter, and, you know, I can try and help him in whatever way I can yeah thank you for that and if you do want to find him he's, he goes by Trust of Fox um, and you've probably seen his pictures everywhere and every band that you've ever seen has had a picture took by him at some point um, so yeah keep an eye out for him and like we say if there's any more questions um, just drop, either drop me at the Pentatonic or Nobody Talks Anymore or uh, Trust of Fox a message and we'll help out as much as we can